Hi, this is Mike, and today on Minimal 3DP, we're going to take a look at using a Clipper macro to back up my Clipper configurations to GitHub. So let's go ahead and get started. Periodically, I like to take a look at GitHub and look around for different Clipper projects and macros. And recently, I ran across this set of scripts, which allows me to back up my Clipper configuration using a macro. I can also set it up on a cron job. So every time I reboot the system, it takes backup. But what I really like is the fact that it adds a button to the dashboard. I can just hit and then it backs up the configuration to GitHub. So let me show you how we get this configured. And it's pretty easy. So to start off, we're going to go to the GitHub repository and I'll put a link in the video description. I'm going to copy and then go over to my terminal and I'm going to SSH onto my machine, which this could be in my case, it's a PC, but it could just as easily be a Raspberry Pi. So I'm going to log in. And so now I'm on the machine in question and my Clipper instance I want to back up is in printer five underscore data. I'm just going to go to that folder. I'll hit ls and you can see there's no backup folders in there i'm just going to type git clone and then paste the repo link and that's going to clone the, re the repo to my machine if i hit ls you'll notice there's now a clipper dash backup folder so we now have the repo cloned to my machine Let's go back over to the browser. So I've navigated over to my GitHub repository and I'm going to click new and I want to click a new repository. So I'm just going to call this Ender 3 v 2 dash Clipper. So this is the repo name that I'm going to, I'm going to back up my, the Clipper configuration for my Ender 3 v2 over to this. We add a description. So I've added that. I'm going to leave this as a public repository. That way, if anybody ever wants to look at this repo, they can look at my configurations for my Ender 3 v2. And I'm just going to hit create repository. That takes a minute. So now I have my repository initialized, at least on GitHub. Now to make this work on my machine, I need to get a personal access key. So I'm going to click on my account and then go down to settings. So this is the settings for my account as opposed to the settings for the repository. I'm going to scroll to the bottom and hit developer settings and then click personal access token. And I use the fine grain tokens. Delete this one that's here. And I'm just gonna click generate new token. Now you're gonna see my token and this is supposed to be a secret. And after I post this video, I'll go ahead and recreate my token so I don't have to worry about this. But I'm just gonna call it ender three v 2 dash Clipper. I'm going to set this for 90 days. So this will work for 90 days. And I think I can set it with custom, but I really don't want to mess with that right now. So we'll leave that. So this is the personal access token for Ender 3 V2 dash. Clipper. So I'm clicking on select, repo only select repositories. I want to scroll down and find my Ender 3 v2 dash Clipper repo. So I'm going to click that. So I only want that one on permissions. And I might be given too much permissions here, but I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to do go down to contents and hit read write. I'm going to go down to workflows and rewrite and then hit generate token. And then I'm just going to leave this screen up for right now and I'll come back to this in a minute and then I'll have to copy that code. With this all done on GitHub, I want to go back to my terminal. So now that I have the 
personal access token generated back in my terminal. Let me hit LS. Then I want to go into my Clipper backup folder. So I'm going to do CD Clipper dash backup. Let me hit LS again. So now here are the four files in the backup folder. And my next step is I'm going to create an environmental variables file that stores my username, my personal access token, and the files I want to generate. This file won't be copied over to GitHub. It's only going to be available on my machine, and that way it keeps my personal access token safe. So to create that, I'm just going to do sudo nano.env. And that opens up a blank file. So I'm going to go back to my browser window. And if I go back to the original backup code, one of the files here is a .env example. So I'm going to copy that. And I'm just going to copy all the code. I'm going to copy that go back over to the terminal and paste that into Nano. So I paste this into Nano. Now we're going to make some changes. So we're going to go up to the top here where it says GitHub token and delete what's here. Then go back over to the browser to the access token I left open. I'm going to hit copy, go back to the terminal and paste. So that's in there. I'm going to change my username to minimal 3DP. And change the repo name to Ender 3B2-Clipper. I'm going to go down here and change the backup folder to Ender 3B2-Clipper again. Now, all these files that are being backed up in the example, I don't have all those. So I'm going to delete several lines here. And let me delete those and we'll come back and then look at what, what next steps we need to do. So as you can see, I have four files I want to back up. And we need to make a couple of small changes here to these paths. In the example, their username is Pi. In my case, it's Wilson M. So I'm going to change that. And my configs are stored at printer five underscore data. So let's go change the paths here so everything matches my machine. So now that matches my machine, everything looks like it's spelled right. To quit Nano and save, I'm going to hit Control X, hit Yes. And that should have saved my file. So just to make sure, I'm going to type LS minus A. And if you look, the very first file is my .env. Just to check things, let's open that back up in Nano. Everything there looks correct. Let's exit again, Control X. Now, just to make sure that I'm not copying my settings and whatnot up to GitHub, let's take a look at the .gitignore file. The .gitignore file is a file that tells Git not to copy certain files and directories up to GitHub. Let's just make sure what that has in it. So I'm going to do sudo nano dot git ignore. And I can see that the first line is the dot env. So what that means is my dot env file is just going to be a local file on my machine, it won't go to GitHub. So that's good. Control X. And then we have one more change to make here. We need to install a G code shell function script. And I'm using the Clipper install and update helper. And I've gone over that in a previous video. And we're just going to go ahead and install the shell scripts via Clipper install and update helper. So let me pause and we'll go over into that. As you can see at the bottom of my terminal, I've put the startup code for the Clipper install and update helper. So I have that up and running on screen. I'm going to go to number four advanced. 
and then select eight. And I just need to do this once to install that G code shell command plugin. I'm going to hit Y for yes. Now you have to be careful with the script and what you install after this, but I feel pretty safe with everything I'm doing. Since I already have it installed, I'll just go ahead and tell it to install it again. I'm also going to let it install a example shell script command. That way, if I want to do something with this in the future, I can create my own. So now that's all installed. So what we're going to do is switch over to my actual printer and make some changes over there. And so that way we can actually run the script via button in the interface. Now I've opened up main sale for my Ender 3 V2. I want to just scroll down, look at my macros, and at the bottom here, you'll notice there's no git update button because I haven't installed it. But let's go ahead and add the code we need to make everything work. So I'm going to click machine and then printer. And I just want to scroll down here to the bottom of my code, go right, in my case, about line 279. And I'm going to go back over to the installation instructions or the backup tool. And I'm going to click Execute. So what I need to do, I have this code to add the button. So I'm going to copy that back over to my printer.config and paste it in and then save and restart. Now we're going to pay attention to Clipper here and make sure everything, the main cell, make sure everything restarts. And it does. So let's go over here to the dashboard. Scroll down, and there's an update get button now. So let's go ahead and give this a go and see if this works. So I'm going to hit update get, then scroll up here. You notice I have an error, so I've made a mistake here. So let's, and I know exactly what I've done wrong. So let's click on machine, go back to the printer, and I forgot to update the folder of where I have everything stored. So I'm going to scroll down to that code I pasted in. And I need to change this. The home directory is Wilson M. In my case, I installed the scripts to printer five underscore data. And then I left everything the same. So let's save and restart and try that again. And I'll leave this in the video so that way you can see. Well, sometimes I just fumble around with this stuff a little bit. So I'm going to hit update git. And let's just watch the console and see what it says. It says it's finished. So I'm going to go back over to my repo. So let's click over to the repo and take a look. So here's my Ender 3 V2 dash Clipper repo. And if I click on it, it has the code in it, but here's my folder Ender 3 V2 Clipper. And when I open it, there's my four files I'm backing up. So as you can see, there's my actual printer.config file. So I'm pretty happy with this. Now I can go ahead and automate this. In my case, I really don't want to. I just want this as a button on the interface here. Now there is instructions. If you go back over to the execute page where you can put in a cron job and there's the steps for doing that. Well, let me just show you how to do it. So if I could go back over, I'm going to copy this cron tab dash E. Let's hit copy. Go back to the terminal and paste that in. If I scroll to the bottom of the cron file, I can then paste in this next line, which is whenever it reboots, it'll run the install script. And then I just customize that for my printer. Hit Control X. Yes, if I made a change and then enter. And so now there's a cron job whenever I reboot the machine it will also back up. As of right now, I've successfully set up the update get button in my interface. I've also set up the cron job. I really don't care so much about the cron job. I just like having a button here. Whenever I make changes, I can upload it to GitHub. 
And so that way everything's safe, but it also cuts down on me having to copy things back and forth. Now there are other scripts to automate this process, but I really like this. It's nice and simple. And so I'm pretty happy with how this is going to go. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments below. I appreciate your time today. This is Mike. I want to thank you again for joining me as I do another Clipper Macro video. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below. If you like what I'm doing, please feel free to share my work. If there's something else you'd like to see or learn about, let me know and I'll try to add it to a future video. Thanks for joining me today. Hope you have a great day. Thanks. Talk to you again soon. Bye.